Venezuela and my concern about the threat of right-wing destabilization. And it's just an ongoing job to get the truth out about Venezuela, even amongst other progressive colleagues. I don't know if it's been mentioned, but I was amazed that a few weeks ago, Radio 4, I confess I'm a Radio 4 listener, had as its book of the week this book by the Guardian journalist Rory Carroll, who is just who is incredibly biased and anti chavez It wasn't a particularly good book. It was clearly partisan. And for the life of me, I don't understand why it's made the book, the book of the week. But it all, it's all part of this constant push to demonize Chavez, to demonize what's happening in Venezuela, and to get the right version of events out there. So even within the labor movement, you're having to battle to establish the truth. And just to add um, to what Andy said, I mean, I was an election server in October. And you cannot stress enough that technically this is a very clean and robust election process. It is actually less liable to fraud and impersonation than the British election process, which I know well because I've fought five general elections. It's, it's clearly a better process than the ones the American had, the American side in them. 2000 presidential election, remember? Those hanging chads in Florida and so on. It's a better process than they had then. And, you know, but you get this constant drumbeat to say, oh, the, the process is, 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 is wrong and there's pressure and there's this and there's that. It's a clean process. Every, at every polling station, all the different parties have observers. And not only is it a clean and sort of technically advanced process, everything about the process, including the actual computer systems that are used, has been cleared with the opposition. They, their computer guys check the computer programs that they use in the electoral process. So if the opposition turn around now and complain about the process, it's extraordinary. And this idea that you know, people, voters are intimidated, I was in um, Caracas in October, and I went to polling stations in middle class districts, and there are all these wonderful middle class women in their pearls and their twin sets chanting, and they didn't look in any way intimidated to me. I mean, the notion that the right in, in Venezuela is somehow intimidated and we're willing to come out and vote, that is a nonsense. So I just wanted to stress because you, you constantly have to argue people, okay, look, you know, there's nothing wrong with the electoral process, there isn't voter intimidation. It's less prone to fraud in the British system. Um, the other thing to say about Venezuela, and, and I say this as somebody of Caribbean heritage, is what a beacon he is to Latin America and the Caribbean and the third world as a whole. Can you imagine if Nigeria did with its oil money what Chavez did with his oil revenues? <laughs> Chavez regime 
had the best results in fighting poverty and increasing, improving the standards of the very poorest of any regime in the region. And at a time when the third world is encouraged to think that, you know, addressing poverty is not the most important thing, the most important thing is to open up to markets, the most important thing is to privatise everything. Chavez put fighting poverty and improving the living standards of the very poorest at the top of his agenda. That's an incredibly important lesson <coughs> for the third world countries and the region. Incredibly important. And that's one of the reasons why I particularly feel passionate about defending the, the revolution of Venezuela and the Chavez legacy. Um, we, we're seeing the right in, Ch in, in Venezuela quite, as I say, quite groundlessly trying to query the election system, a cleaner election system than the one you have in Britain and America, quite groundlessly, and inviting intervention. We heard about that, the banner saying we have oil bomb, uh, bomb us too. I mean, one of the things about the right in Venezuela is, I think, <coughs> They're not just right wing in the sense that we understand the right wing here in Britain. They're right wing in the sense they have absolutely no loyalty or commitment to the Venezuelan state. For their own personal greed and advantage, they don't even sign up to the nationalism which characterizes petty bourgeoisie around the world. It's quite extraordinary. And the other thing to bear in mind about the right in Venezuela is one of the reasons they that's not perhaps not the main reason, but one of the reasons. It's not just that he was a socialist, it's not just that he challenged their grip on power, but he came. I mean, he was, he's, his skin colour and his background, you know, he was not part of the European Latin American elite. And that is one of the reasons there was such visceral hatred for Chavez, but far beyond his actual politics, amongst the Venezuelan elite and amongst elite representatives across the region. And that's why it's really important to stand up to defend his legacy, but above all, to defend the poor in Venezuela, because it was the poor and the suffering and the underclass that Venezuela, that Chavez had at the center of his agenda. It will be at the center of the agenda of this new administration. And we have to side with people who otherwise do not have a voice. Thank you very much.